Alright, 13. Unsealed pipe is being carried. Down a hallway five feet wide. At the end of the hallway. There is a right angle turn into a narrower hallway four feet wide. What is the length of the what is the length of the longest pipe that can be carried horizontally? around the corner. Okay, so uh, I guess the, the picture is that you have four feet one here, and here is a five feet hole in here, and you're trying to uh, <coughs> Take, take a pipe, right? you have some pipe, and you're trying to go around the corner. Now the problem is, there must be this, the shortest length, when you, I mean, among these, these lines that you draw, there must be the shortest length, and the length of the pipe, since it, it's turning, it can't be bigger than this shortest length. <coughs> That's basically the question. Okay. Did it make sense? Yes. Okay. All right. Uh, so we, in order to answer this, we need a, another type of, of picture, because after all, you're trying to say that uh, you, you have a point which is four away from this wall and five away from this wall, and you're trying to see what's the shortest length of the line that you can draw here. Okay. That's basically the idea, right? You're trying to see which, which, which length is the shortest. Uh, so we, we end up with, uh, with two triangles here. Uh, let, let's just say, since this much is five, and that's four, Let's put uh, x for this part and y for this part. Now I think that way it's easier to come up with a uh, relationship between x and y. You'll see why later, okay? All right, so uh, what's the target function? This length, right? How do you get that? L is square root of, yeah, yeah, 4 plus y squared, and let's put 5 plus x first. 5 plus x squared plus 4 plus y squared. Again, it's a function of two variables, so you need <coughs> relationship between x and y. How are you going to get the relation between x and y? 
so for one. Yeah, but, but how do you get the relationship? Yeah. Once you get the solution, relationship, you solve for one variable, but how do you get the relationship? Any thoughts? <coughs> All right, here's a nice picture. This is what you want to use. If you, if you don't, no. Okay, let's, I'll give you a hint. What x is to four is equal to what? What five is? What five is to y? Because I'm looking at these two triangles, right? What x is to four is same as what five is to y. These two triangles are similar triangles. Right? They're both right triangles, and because these two are parallel, these two angles are the same. They're similar triangles. Now, once you have ratio, you cross multiply, so you have xy equals to 4 times 5, which is 20. And then uh, we'll solve for y. You can also solve for x. It's a preference in this case. I don't see any advantage for solving with this respect to anything. OK, uh, so you have L now a uh, function of a single variable. Let me write as 1 half power, because that's easier to differentiate. Okay, 5 plus x squared plus 4 plus 20 over x squared. Now we differentiate. 1 half, 5 plus x squared plus 4 plus 20 over x squared to so negative 1 half. And then the inside has to be pulled out and differentiated. So times 2 times 5 plus x times 1 plus, if you differentiate this, it's uh, again 2 times 4 plus 20 over x. And when you differentiate, 1 over x, it's negative 1 over x squared. Differentiating 4 gives you 0. So when you pull the inside out and differentiate, 4 gives you 0. But if you differentiate this, you get negative 20 over x squared. Uh, you see that 1 half cancels with these two. And we also see that this cannot ever be 0, because x is positive. x cannot be negative, right? So x is positive, so these are all positive values, so this can't be 0. And therefore, we end up with the following. We have 5 plus x plus uh, 4 plus 20 over x <coughs> times negative 20 over x squared, which simplifies to 5 plus x, and then 4 times 20, that's 80 over x squared. And then this time, this 20 times 20 is 400. So it's minus 400 over x cubed. Yeah, and I have a feeling this will again be uh, solved using factor by grouping, right? OK, so we have to see when this is equal to 0. We're trying to see when this is equal to 0. How do you solve this? Factor by grouping. Yeah, but before that, what do you do? First. Get rid of the fractions. Yeah. yeah. But how, how do you get rid of the fractions? Just multiply multiply, the multiply, the multiply by x cubed, right? Then it's going to cancel both, right? 5 x cubed. X cubed times x is? X to the fourth. X to the fourth, right? And then x cubed times x cubed, if you multiply to this, x squared will cancel the two x's, negative but you will have one x left over, so it would be negative 80 x. And then the last one will be just minus 4. <coughs> and then uh, you organize it in, <coughs> in their orders. x to the fourth is the highest order. The next one is 5x cubed minus, minus 80x minus, minus 400. And I factor by 2. So it's uh, x cubed, x plus 5, minus 80 x plus 5, and therefore I, I get x cubed minus 80, x plus 5. So either x is negative 5 or x is radical 80. Cube root of 80. 
it's it's Q root of 80 that gets you zero. Now x can't be negative. That's uh, just from the picture, so that doesn't count. So this is what we need. And then uh, let's see, Q root of 8 is two. Two, two, right? So you can actually rewrite this as x equals to 2 times Q root of 10. Going back to our y, y will become 20 over 2 times Q root of 10. 2, 2 cancels, so it's 10 over Q root of 10, which is Q root of 100. Because uh, 10 is Q root of 1,000. 1,000 divided by 10 is 100. So you get y equals Q root of 100. And plugging these back into our formula, we get the, the shortest length, which again will require some calculator to get the value. So you have L equals to square root of 5 plus cube root, 2 times cube root of 10 squared plus 4 plus cube root of 100, and then squared, squared, okay? So that, that's all you can say. It's the simplest you can come up with without a calculator, but uh, to get an idea of what it is, uh, you should actually do the calculation. Now, in, in practice, you can go a little bit more than this, right? Because you can also make use of the, you can tilt it up, up uh, a little bit up, yeah. up and down. So it can be slightly bigger than that. So there will be uh, still another question to think about. What will be the, the, uh, the longest? But uh, if you're, there, there could be some reason why you have to keep your pipe horizontal. And that will be the case when, uh, when your pipe is, uh, it holds some <coughs> fluid or it has some paint in it, wet, wet paint in it, so that if you tilt it, some paint could come out. Yes? Wouldn't the thickness of the pipe make a difference too? Like if they yeah, so, so this, this will be including the, the, oh yeah, yeah, right, right, right. So uh, that's also true. That's uh, because see, see, we're just modeling the pipe as a, as a straight line, dimension. but uh, the thickness means that you have to be slightly smaller than this one. So, uh, in practice, all kinds of different things should be in uh, considered in addition to this. Okay. <laughs> <laughs>